Hello, and welcome to another development update for Grimstar. January has come to an end, and with it, some new milestones have been reached. After the team took some time off for the holidays, we got back on track with developing a couple of key assets for the game. The crystals that we've worked on previously got a quick overhaul and have been finalized for the game. We went back in and added some additional details and tweaks to really help bring them to life. We added some roughness around the corners of the crystals, and we also reworked the procedural grunge material that runs on the surfaces of the crystals to give it more detail. On top of that, they saw a quick performance pass and are now ready to be used in the game as intended. The Terra Nova has finally been fully UV unwrapped and the base meshes have been compiled into a blueprint within Unreal. From here, we've started the creation and testing of procedural materials to start bringing the ship to life. With how massive the ship is, we can't place unique textures for each individual mesh. That would take up far too much memory and make the game run like doo-doo. Instead, we're using a technique that allows us to save memory while still offering us to have even higher detailed objects than if we were to use the more classical texturing techniques. To allow this added detail, we're making use of trim sheets for both wear and tear, as well as for normal decals which allow us to place mechanical pieces like paneling, portholes, and more onto the mesh without sacrificing detail. This ship is our first implementation of this process, which we've seen used in other games like Star Citizen and Alien Isolation. It's been a learning process, but we're able to place these trim sheets on our existing geometry to get some incredible results. There is still plenty left to do on the Terra Nova, but it's finally heading down the home stretch, and I think we'll all be relieved once it's finished. It's been the largest single asset that any of us has ever worked on. The enemy Cedar has been completely overhauled from a technical standpoint. We've reworked the low poly meshes to give a level of detail that's more consistent with the rest of our art design and the results have been great. Here's a quick preview of the new model. So, how is a ship like this created, you may ask? Well, you're in luck. I'm going to spend some time breaking down the process for you. We first started with a solid piece of concept art. From there, I began working on developing a high-poly sculpt of the ship in ZBrush. Our enemy ships are rock-based, so this ship won't have clean lines of human technology. I start out by blocking out the largest shapes first, making sure everything is in good proportion. It's very crucial to get as much feedback as possible during this stage, as it sets the foundation for everything else to come. Our whole team was constantly providing critique until we nailed down these basic shapes. One, two, three. This side is I actually tucked like... in a little bit more than this side. Yeah, uh, one thing I kind of noticed, I feel like both sides are very even. Yep. Well, he's, he's only working on one side right now. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know, but I'm just saying, like, uh, I'm over. Um, but yeah, just keep it in mind, like, just kind of make them look different, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then, I like what's going on with, like, uh, the bottom side area, the one that you're working on, kind of like how it has that slight curve. Um, I would play around with and try to make it, like, a little more curved. You're talking about the yeah. inside or the outside of the? Uh, like the outside. Okay. Like, from there, I began developing some of the large rock shapes. 
With almost all artwork, it's best to work in the big, broad strokes first and slowly whittle your way down to the fine details. Utilizing a few different brushes, I began to flatten shapes from multiple angles to give the appearance of a more craggy rock. As time went on, I eventually got into the fine details of the ship and started adding some texture to the high poly mesh. Once the ship was ready, I exported the high poly meshes as separate pieces for individual retopology and baking. The rocky body of the ship was decimated in ZBrush and then imported into Maya for further retopology. After some cleanup, everything was unwrapped with careful attention being paid so that the seams didn't appear too noticeable. The low poly body of the ship was then baked with the high poly version so that I could get that high poly detail placed on the low poly version. The results of this process can sometimes be quite staggering. The only textures that I truly needed from this baking process were the normal and curvature maps to be used in the procedural material that was already developed for our game's asteroids. After exporting those textures, I fired up Unreal and began placing all of my meshes into a blueprint, and from there I started authoring some new materials within the engine to be used on the ship's meshes. All of a sudden, I have a living, breathing alien ship. We're quite happy with the results of this new model, and we're very excited to start battling against these ships shortly. We'd love to hear what you think of the design, so please feel free to drop a comment below. If there's any part of the ship development pipeline we use that you would like to know more about, please be sure to let us know and we'll do our best to follow up and maybe even do a tutorial on that as well. We have a lot of very exciting things coming shortly and can't wait to show them off. Be sure to stay tuned for the next devlog. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.